Hi everyone, welcome to this Blythe online art class. Uh, today we're going to look at investigating an object through repetition and we're going to be using looking and thinking to explore an object. Um, I wanted to use this as a slight myth buster um, and to encourage people to repeatedly have a go at an exercise. So I think when we go to an exhibition or see a work of art you can feel quite disheartened and it's like it looks quite easy for that artist just to have produced that thing but what we don't see is all the work and the thought and the development of an idea that goes on behind or before that work is even made. Um, and to think about um, making art is um, part of your art practice and I think it's called practice for a reason as well because it's a continuing learning journey and we never really arrive at a point in our lives where we go I, I know it all now I know how I want to be um, and how to make and I've got all the answers pegged down um, so uh, let's get a little bit more involved with it so the the point is we're going to try things and then we're going to try them again and again and again. So your first job is to pick an object, okay? This is not about uh, copying what I'm doing, um, but you can use what I'm doing as a guideline to find your own investigations into something that you find interesting, okay? So off you go and find an object. So I have chosen an onion as my object. The first question I'm asking myself is, why have I picked an onion when there's so many other objects in the house? Why this one particularly? You could start by asking yourself about the formal qualities. So maybe you like the form, the shape, the colour, the pattern, um, something kind of that you can see about the onion or your object. But I also would like you to think about the more emotional or psychological side of how you relate to the object. So for me, I start with a nostalgic feeling, remembering my mum and um, her letting me know that every good meal starts with an onion. I also really enjoy eating onions. I like their feisty nature and um, that they could make you cry when you cut them. They taste delicious, but then they could give you gas afterwards. So there's a kind of pain pleasure relationship with it when you're consuming it. It's also a plant. It can grow and have a transformative quality, so perhaps it represents a transformation. At the moment, it's in a stasis, um, having been dug out of the ground, but if it's replanted, it would grow roots and shoots, and the bulb is at the epicenter. It could also be the onion is a kind of emotional layering. It's used as symbolism for kind of the outside of the onion being the outside pers persona of a person and then as you peel back the layers you find the inner person kind of deep within the middle of it. So there's lots of different qualities that I am drawn to about the onion, um, emotional and physical properties. Now we'll get down to um, exploring some of those more and maybe linking them back to this brainstorm a bit later on. So, hopefully you can see okay. Um, let's give this a go. Um, so if you can write down five things you can think of that have made you pick the object you've picked and you can always look back at those later. So now I'm going to have a look at the, <laughs> at depicting the onion. I'm using acrylic paint um, to draw with, um, but you can use anything, felt tip, pencil crayons, pencils, um, whatever you've got to hand really, watercolours, or well, fine. So, investigation number one. So just basic kind of form and a quick looking exercise. I can see I've, I've made it look a bit more like that guy, but that's okay. Is it the form? So is it the solidity of the onion that I like? So I'll have a little bit of a look at, at that. Is that what I preferred? I'm just going to line them up, but use separate sheets if you want. Oh, 
this is a blue one. So I can see here that I could actually use the brush marks to my advantage to, uh, to depict my onion. And maybe I use something similar to the root marks for the top. <laughs> if it's about the form and the light and the shade, you know, maybe I put that on as well. Not really feel I'm not really feeling this one okay so that's this is one way to um, to attempt the painting but I'm, it already feels quite heavy for me don't like it. Now that, for me, is a bit more interesting. Oh yes. Okay, so now I've got like an edge, like a ghost of an onion coming through. It's quite nice. So it's, it's good to explore um, and see what you can find with the tools and the materials you're using. Um, I quite like the lines around the onion. I'm wondering if I can do, oh yes, something with that. Um, so it just becomes about more of the pattern. Let's have a see too much that's got something about the skin to it definitely finding that I'm interested in the shoots the roots and shoots more So this is um, just using a dry brush technique. That's quite nice. Might tighten that up with a bit, bit of roots going on at the bottom. Again, a bit more detail at the top. So I'm noticing through repeatedly um, looking at the onion that the top and the bottom are where it's um, where it's at for me, which is good to know. more than the middle bit itself, but like the growth at, the, at either end. Um, let's try a slightly different way of finding that onion shape or colour. If it's about the colour and that punchy naughtiness of the, uh, <laughs> of the onions, it's feistiness, we could just make it a lot more about that colour relationship. I might have to leave this one for a minute while this yellow dries, but yellow's the opposite of purple. Um, so we could punch out a background in the opposite colour to the onion. 
and then put the onion on top and see what happens with the colour. Okay, so we'll leave that for a minute. And my onion's a bit redder than I've mixed. So you can water down acrylic like watercolour, which is what I'm doing in my practice at the moment, or you could you can use it straight out of the tube or mix it with other things uh, to give it a thicker, more visceral feel. So I'm going to do something a bit like that and see what happens. It's quite nice like that. It could just be that. Okay could just be that. And maybe a little bit of that. It's quite a nice one. I'm going to leave that and repeat again. So find some of the lights just by taking some off. My practice also uses a lot of the accident as it goes along. I like a precarious approach, not a controlled approach. So happy accidents tends to be where I'm the most happy myself. When something's a little bit out of control, I'll leave that a bit longer. Um, but maybe it's about the cracks. I'll just turn it round because I did notice before. Oh, yeah. That side has got this beautiful um, crack between one um, layer of skin and another. So just looking at the where the skin's peeling back. Should we try that? Let's try that. What do we want to do? Something like that, maybe? That's feeling very oniony to me. Hmm. Just like that. Let's maybe look at the pattern on the onion so with a bit of tone underneath can we get that yes yeah, definitely more about the way it grows as a plant i think for me at the moment got to get the roots on that seems to be where my hand's going so I know I'm observing myself for this workshop continuously. Um, you might want to just not do the questioning as you go along, but leave it to the end. So just get lost in the making and enjoy making. 
um, and then when you're finished have a look and then ask yourself why did you do the things that you did I don't really have a shadow because I've placed the onion up in the air but you could if it's on the ground you can look at how the shadows um, playing along with it as well yep You could also look at how many different ways you could make purple. So I'm using two uh, reds, a magenta and more of a cadmium. And I've got a phthalo blue. Um, ultramarine would be really nice as well, mixed with um, the crimson. will give you a nice strong purple. So more of a drawing of the onion. So the lines of the skin. You could combine some of these techniques that you found. Not sure about that one doesn't matter that's quite nice um what about a fat heavy onion with some thicker paint let's have a try almost piping the paint on it's quite nice as well so this one's lost the uh more about like the form and the just where the light's hitting it across the top and using a little bit of the uh, little bit of the brush marks for the to create this kind of feel And I'm going through quite quickly just to show you like some fast techniques, but you could, you know, you could go, right, I'm going to spend an hour on one of these and then two minutes on the next one. We don't all have to be fast. They can be different speeds. I think that would be really useful as well. Playing around a little bit with different texture. What happens if we change that background colour a bit and Lego them together rather than 
layer, layering it up, leg, um, not leg up, jigsawing together. So the colours all have the same white showing through. Weird. Quite dry enough. And then imagining maybe it was buried in the ground. I'm going to take some of this paint off when it's a bit drier, but it's not quite there yet. Okay, and you don't need to watch this paint dry. So, um, so we'll come back in a minute once I've taken that paint off. So I've, I think I've stopped painting now. Um, I went a bit early with the this one. With it uh, wiping off, it sort of turned into a swirling vortex. Um, and whilst I was waiting for that to dry, I just carried on fiddling around. So I've got a few ghost onions and kind of like an exploding blue onion at the top. And then this one's not coming out very well on film, but um, just putting a colour down and then scraping it back with pencil to another colour underneath. And... This one's not coming out too well either, but it's just one big swooping gesture. Um, so, we've had a go at different approaches, looking at form, um, like the form. Um, we've ended up with a ghost, a shadow, another shadow one, uh, the pattern, uh, more of the physical quality, the weight of the onion. Uh, just the crack in the skin, um, a little bit of texture here. Um, so uh, the colour, just the colour itself and playing around with the colour. So there's, I'm sure there's more that you could explore. Um, going back to how I was feeling about the onion, I think this one is the most successful in terms of thinking about it as a an object to eat, the desirability of the object and the visceral jewel-like quality of the paint, but kind of a little bit toxic, dangerous colours. Um, so that works for that in terms of thinking of it as a uh, as a shell, maybe with layers uh, to an internal person or an internal personalities and the outside being the husk. Possibly this one's more successful or maybe this one um the potential for it to grow into something else i quite like the first one i did actually the ones that gave me the nicest surprise were the these two so just in terms of happy accidents they feel really like this onion to me and they were made in just a couple of uh gestures so in terms of visually depicting it they seem really successful and, and simple and not too um, strenuous way just kind of a nice simple feel for the onion and then where to take it from here well make some more or well, you could cut one out and say this is the finished thing or the whole thing could be uh, the piece of work uh, Lisa Milroy does some really nice series of paintings of similar objects together as a series and um, you could look at her work uh, yeah I think just enjoy it and don't worry about if one's going wrong. Like for me, a lot of these went pear shaped. It wasn't really what I was imagining was going to happen, but it doesn't matter. Um, you just carry on, try again, try again. And the ones you don't like, you can always throw away or look at on another day. I um, hope this has been helpful for you. I'd love to see what you've made. Um, if you'd like to share with me on Instagram, it's blythe underscore arts. Um, enjoy playing around with your object and um, I look forward to seeing you next time. Thank you very much. Bye.